happily, our last session is also one I'm really excited about. It's going to be covering the next generation of TV planning, buying, and measurement. And I'd like to welcome to the stage John Hochter, GM of Measurement at LiveRamp, and Christine Gramier, Managing Director at LiveRamp. Thank you, Penelope. Thank you. Um, I am thrilled to be joined here with Christine. I was the founder and CEO of Data Plus Math, a recent acquisition by LiveRamp. Uh, the deal closed just over two months ago. Woo! And uh, I'm really proud that I, at one point during this, I'm going to turn over the clicker to Christine, who is a live ramper. She wasn't at Data Plus Math, and she's going to give the demo of the Data Plus Math product. No pressure in front of him. Yes, and I'm going to resist the urge to like, grab the mouse and click on things the way I would give the demo. <laughs> um, but it's, we're rapidly being integrated into LiveRap, and uh, it's really such a great fit. That's us. That's us. <laughs> All right, uh, briefly, because I know we're the last session, and we're between you and cocktails, uh, we'll go over a little bit about TV today. I know there's some people in the room who are more from the digital side, so we'll just talk about the state of TV today, uh, talk a little bit about Live Ramp and Data Plus Math coming together. Christine will do a demo. I won't interfere. And then we'll talk about next steps. So I think there's a big misnomer that TV's dead, TV's dying. Uh, what's really happening is TV is now cross-channel. This is what living rooms are like today. TV is not dying. TV is going through a renaissance. The amount of premium video that's consumed is higher today than ever before. People just have a lot more control about how they watch it, how it's delivered to them, who's providing them the service. For the consumer, this change has been really fantastic. I think we're all probably watching better content than we were a few years ago, and we're watching it on our own terms, where we want to watch it. But for the industry, change can be very hard. TV has been stuck behind really outdated measurement. It's been very hard. And this is really isn't pointing a finger at one company or another. Changing over from a television like this, where the whole family gathers around at 8 o'clock to tune in to like a handful of broadcast stations to the world we live in today is a massive change. And that's very hard to navigate. The old system of measuring television was really based upon broad demographics. And that really doesn't fit with the way marketers are using their own data today to develop these customer personas. They do a lot of, a lot of work for targeting and measurement on the digital side. And just in my last panel, I said, it's really a shame when you think about all the work that goes into developing those customer personas that they do on digital to then translate it into women 25 to 54 or men you know, 18 to 49 on television to do a buy. Uh, this really has to change. Marketers are pushing for this change. They want to apply new and different data to television. But to do that, somebody needs to solve for the fragmented data. You can't really use a small panel approach to measure what TV has become. Uh, you need an entity to bring together the streaming data, the linear data that's going through a set-top box, the addressable exposures that your cable provider is, uh, is serving to you, and tie them all together, uh, unify the, the ID, and enable marketers to make much better plans and much better uh, buys. So that's really our vision. We want to enable marketers to measure TV's impact on the business outcomes, you know, the things you're actually trying to drive, they're not trying to put their message in front of women 18 to 49. They're trying to sell their product. They're trying to get people to go to their stores. They're trying to get people to purchase movie tickets. Enable marketers to measure against those business outcomes at scale across all these various screens. So to sum it up, we want to move where the viewers are. We want to provide a measurement platform that can keep up with the rapidly changing viewing environment that we live in today. We want to enable marketers to do much more personalized marketing through premium video, and we're helping the marketers with a unified identity that can uh, bring together exposures that are on these disparate uh, distribution platforms together to have a unified view of reach, frequency, and outcome measurement. So now I will turn it over to Christine. Uh, and I will, I'm going to start with uh, really how, uh, how I got to spend a lot of time with John over, uh, over the process of Data Plus Math um, becoming part of LiveRamp. And really, um, it, was a, it was in response to a recognized gap. LiveRamp said, we want to listen to the sell side 
MVPDs, programmers, um, platforms, and we want to listen to marketers and we want to hear where the problems are because uh, we want to do everything we can in this business to reduce friction. And the problem that we kept hearing were all the ones John just hit on earlier. We have, we have measurement problems. Um, <clears throat> Google can walk in with um, a bunch of information about how their impressions are driving business outcomes, um, and, um, and, and we can't. Uh, we're often uh, left um, in, in situations where we can't really quantify what the new reach that's happening in full episode players or the, the reach that's happening in OTT. Uh, we can't quantify what that reach is. We can't quantify how it, uh, how it delivers business outcomes. <clears throat> So uh, we brought uh, LiveRamp and Data Plus Math together. And, um, and really, the idea here is um, it's not very complicated. The world's uh, most scaled identity combined with really the most comprehensive premium video data set. Um, those, are, those are the two things that really made this combination make sense. Uh, you can see the, the metrics here for, uh, for what we have now in this combined solution of, of really uh, Data Plus Math and all the great work that um, John and, and Matt and the folks at Data Plus Math had built combined with, um, with LiveRamp. Um, so I'm just going to recap quickly. When I say comprehensive data, I think this is a really important point to make sure that you guys uh, get to digest and think a little bit about. And then I'll go into the demo. I'm probably going to get out there to the screens and be pointing at the demo on the screen um, as we jump into it. So when we say comprehensive data, I'm going to talk about the left-hand side of this. I think it's left for you. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, left-hand side of this screen. Uh, so. Really, and this is a lot to do with um, Data Plus Math going out and building partnerships with a lot of different players in this space. I'm sure some of you are in the room today. Um, but going out and, and building relationships with Smart TV, so the ACR data providers, so we can, we can take the, that TV, the TV data that's coming off of the Smart TVs, ingest that for TV ad exposure. We can use the set-top box data from partners and really, the, the platform was built to be able to use these things together, to be able to use them separate, um, to be able to ebb and flow, essentially, the defined data set that's going to be inside the platform. Um, mobile, tablet, and desktop viewing. Uh, this is going to include your online video, um, you know, often OLV uh, acronym. Uh, brought in through the, through the live ramp graph or, or through a pixel, we have some different options for how we can bring that data together and get it all to a common household. Full episode players, so the, the relationships with the sell side that allow us to um, really to help give the, the sell side platforms and partners full credit. So, so let's actually, instead of just counting the impressions that are on, um, that are on a, a linear or some extended view, let's get all of the impressions that you're delivering on your, um, your discovery was on the panel a few minutes ago, on all of your uh, TV Everywhere apps. So, um, so bring all of that impression data together so that uh, we can really understand how this great content that our entertainment companies are making is truly delivering to our most important audiences. And then, um, and then, of course, bringing in display or other online um, impression data. So all of those different components, think of that as the, the delivery mechanisms that are you know, taking impressions in premium video out to, um, out to your, your core target audiences. All of those different data elements can be ingested and reduced down to an identity link by LiveRamp. Uh, before uh, we, we bought Data Plus Math, um, they were already a partner using the identity link in their process. That is really the, um, the, uh, the advantage in Data Plus Math is very comprehensive. I said it again, I'll say it again and again and again. Comprehensive viewing data is what makes uh, this platform uh, really different um, and fantastic. I'm actually not going to do uh, the right-hand side of this. Each of you know what your conversion data sets are. Uh, they might be a website visit. They might be a, um, an offline transaction. They might be um, a, a survey data point, maybe a store visit. You, whatever your appropriate outcome variable is, um, you probably all know by now, LiveRamp has great methods to connect that down to an identity link in a household. The thing we would do if we had two hours together is we would go into really the attribution algorithm that, um, that the Data Plus Math team has put on top of this data to help understand um, 
actually a couple of steps. One is the, the weighting and adjusting the data to really bring it together to represent um, a, a US household um, panel, essentially. Uh, that step is a very important part of, of what happens next. And then, of course, the attribution to then um, identify how each of these different touch points are actually driving business outcomes. Call us, have us come in and spend time with you, and you can get all that detail. But in the meantime, I am going to dive into what the UI actually looks like. So, um, so this data is all ingested. Um, an, an algorithm is laid over it to do the weighting and the scaling for, for population. And the attribution um, algorithm is, is added. And then um, we get to put in your hands in your agency's hands, so brands and agencies, or sell site partners, so the likes of an MVPD or a, a programmer also could be a user of this platform, and I'll, I'll try to speak to, to both sides as I continue through it. Anything to add before I jump in? You are doing perfectly. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I'm trying. Um, all right, I am going to start over here, actually. And um, so if you, you've logged into Data Plus Math, uh, maybe you had a four to six week configuration setup. Can you guys still hear me? My mic. OK, good. Um, and, your, and your platform is now up and running. And what you're, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get the highest level view um, of give me a start. Let me see how many people are seeing my campaign. So a total household view here. Uh, each campaign may be laid out on top of each other. If you have several different campaigns running or you've got some historic data in here. And you're looking at. Um, Simple high-level number. What's the reach? How many of the how many of the total U.S. households am I reaching with my campaign? And this can be all those premium video levers that you you've loaded in. Then across uh, across here, you're actually getting a daily view of impressions, transactions, um, some of the, the ongoing metrics. Over here, all the way on on the other side of the screen, is where you see some of your first view of business outcomes. So what you're going to see there is you're going to see uh, total conversions. So if we take this as a retailer, um, 543,000 conversions so far in this campaign. Maybe we're a few weeks into this campaign. 414,000 of them would have happened without the premium video. So this is essentially your baseline. And then the incrementality from all of the additional advertising that we're looking at here is going to be 130,000 uh, conversions. So that's really what um, you're going to see at the highest level. Then you, you dig in, you click that Analyze button, and we're going to go deeper into that first, um, that first view. This is an all-households view now of, a, of specific audience details. Um, in, in your platform, you can configure any of your own audiences that you want to see here. So if you have a, if you were in here earlier, we were talking about the, the Lexus audience. If you've got a very specific definition of households with a certain uh, income skew, maybe kids, uh, maybe a recent, uh, recent um, or lease end is, is coming up, you can have that in here as your specific audience that you want to understand, the reach going to that audience. Um, you can understand it relative to the population, your frequency distribution, and then the conversions that are being sourced specifically from that audience. So this is your audience view where you can layer in first, second, third party audiences to really get at um, no longer just total households, no longer just age and gender, but exactly what audiences are most important to you. Um, so now we dig in more deeply. We're going to look at impression, reach, lift, creative. You're going to get a lot of depth and granularity here. Um, I always like to think of this as uh, if, you're, if you're an agency team and you're sitting behind this uh, steering wheel, it's giving you all of the information that you're being asked for by your brand. Um, so agency buyer planner is a super user of, of this platform. They can download any of it. All these data points are available via an API. So if you, if you don't want to work in the UI yourself, you can be extracting it into other views in other ways. The impression data is it's just going to give you simple summary views of impressions being delivered. Um, but again, remember, now this is including all of your different, um, your OTT, your, your CTV, um, display impressions if you want to load those in also. Um, in one place, um, so you can see how they're falling out across day parts. Pretty simple, but gets you started. Then you dig into a view of reach, looking pretty similar. How is, how is this entire campaign delivering against day parts? Frequency levels across my different audience? How am I delivering into um, different types of, of platforms? Um, and, um, and then 
Uh, you can, just to give you the dimensions, you can get deep into your OTT views, your different, your different networks. You, this is very configurable of exactly what your levers are. Uh, you can define them as they are um, for your business. Then we start to get into business outcomes. So everything we got to that point, and before you even get to business outcomes, so let's see, back, okay. Um, at this point, if you're an agency buyer, planner, or you're on the sell side, so you're, you're an MVPD looking at this for, um, for a brand, this is giving you the opportunity to optimize to a, to a strategic audience, potentially. So maybe um, uh, an agency is looking at an opportunity where they're not focused on business outcomes for a certain brand. Maybe they're really just focused on strategic audience reach. Um, and in that case, what you would be able to do here is you'd be able to look at on the fly, weekly, you're looking at how am I delivering impressions across all my different inventory on the sell side. That could mean you're optimizing your inventory selection to deliver the best placements to the brand. On the brand side or the agency side, it could mean that you're going into taking options um, in, in a specific way with a specific strategy. You're going into adding some scatter money in a specific strategy. Maybe um, you're looking to just make some recommendations and some requests for what make goods look like. So uh, this is kind of the everyday, day-to-day -day flow of how an agency might just use impression and reach data. So um, that's before you even get to business outcomes. Then we jump to business outcomes. So you jump into business outcomes in the low hanging fruit uh, where um, I, I see brands that are, have been working with, um, with John for a while now. Low hanging fruit is often this very first view of response to frequency. So when a brand really gets their hands on this and they understand um, where that saturation point is in a campaign, um, it's almost immediate action that can be taken, taking for, from some of those placements and that on the prior screens had some heavy frequency build, and they could immediately take some of that budget from, from where they were just building frequency and move it to some places where, um, where maybe they can extend reach a little bit. So this response to frequency view is always a quick win. Um, over there on the other side, we've got just the test control lift. Um, for any of the data scientists or the analytics people in the room, generally an ask is always, what is the significance level of that number? Like, can I really trust that number? Is number A different than number B? Um, and what you'll see in some of these next screens is actually you have, you have the flexibility to, uh, to adjust that yourself and identify um, at what level you actually want, to, um, you want to, to measure and you want to see in your outcomes. This is an example of that. Um, so in this case, this is going to be the, the blue bars are going to be um, lift based on uh, impressions delivered in those uh, in these specific day parts. You can see here, many of the day parts look very similar to each other, and they're within they're all within the bounds of the the significance levels. Um, but then there's one very specific one that stands out here at, at morning, being uh, less responsive for this brand. These are on the fly uh, changes, uh, camp, uh, media planners, buyers, and, and brands together align to make changes. We have, we have brands who work in a, in a DR capacity and are out there making these changes every single week to optimize um, their, their DR plans. We have brands who are upfront buyers who are, uh, who are really looking at making adjustments, again, as I said, through options or, or make goods. And then we have brands um, who are out there looking specifically as they load in OTT or they try a test and learn uh, maybe with an addressable campaign. Are they actually able to change some of these metrics? Are they able to extend reach to a specific audience? So the platform um, both supports ongoing optimizations as well as really specific test and learns. Rolling data up, this is just an example. Um, here we've got some, some roll-ups of different types of TV so that you can look at it very granularly, platform by platform, placement by placement, or you can start to aggregate things up. Um, there's the detail for business outcomes, just like you had seen in the previous. And that's about all we're gonna share today. So we're giving you just enough to, to show you the things I, I didn't actually get to cover at all, um, but that you can learn more about are going to be um, creative, the creative dynamics. Uh, so there's a, a, an entire view in there related to creative. Um, what else didn't I get to show? 
Oh, there's so much. Uh, like we barely scratched the surface. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm a proud parent, so I can like keep flipping through pictures of my kids over and over again. Uh, but we will spare you that. Uh, I think we did enough to, uh, to hopefully get you interested. I think uh, there, as TV continues to evolve, I think you just have to realize it's going to get more and more complicated. It's not going to get simpler. Um, so. Well, at Data Plus Math and Live Ramp are really positioned to help you. We're really help in a position to help you tie together those screens, tie them with outcomes, and help you really maximize your, your marketing spend. Um, so I guess as like next steps in summary, why we'd like to work with you. The we work, we have a very agency friendly approach. So if you're a brand, we're happy to work with your agency. Um, I don't think there's a single client where the agency isn't logging into the platform for their client. So if you're at an agency, please reach out. Uh, Christina has a team of subject matter experts that can sit down with you and walk you through the platform in detail. The, hopefully you notice that that's really a self-serve platform, which I think is really interesting. A lot of the Lyft reporting that's come before us is more, uh, you, know, you hire a consultant or you hire a firm to go do something. You get a PowerPoint presentation or Excel spreadsheet you know, eight weeks after a campaign is over, maybe later, and your campaign is already over. You can't really make any changes. You can't even make changes to the next campaign because that's already in flight. <clears throat> Imagine being able to log in and get updates during the course of a campaign through, through that UI. Um, we, we invest a ton in the algorithms. Uh, I think LiveRamp was shocked when we gave them our headcount and we showed the percentage that had PhDs that were working on the algorithms. So we take a lot of pride. Uh, there's a lot of nerd pride up there, up there in Boston in the office. We're also spending a lot of time with OTT and connected TV. There are other folks out there trying to do a better job of measuring traditional linear TV, um, and that's great. We feel like if you're not solving for OTT and connected TV at the same time, you're missing. You're missing a lot. And as a network, you want to make sure you're getting credit for those, uh, those streaming exposures as well. And as a marketer, you certainly care about streaming and linear. And if you get a holistic view, that's the best of both worlds. Um, and then lastly, another great reason is we're working with most of the major programmers. So one way that uh, brands have gotten started with Data Plus Math is they've started receiving reporting from one of the major network families. Through that, you're able to get a taste of it, and oftentimes the brand or the agency will reach out and want us to measure more than what they're getting reporting from the network on. So uh, lots of ways to start working with us. Please, please reach out, and uh, either Christine or I will make sure we come by and give you guys a complete demo. And we are, um, we are game for questions, so we've saved ourselves maybe two or three minutes. Uh, anybody out there got a question or two they want to throw at us? <laughs> no questions. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so her, her question was, um, what are the use cases for a DSP or an SSP? I'm going to let John answer that one. Yeah, so we work with a lot of the largest advertisers uh, in the US. <laughs> and Data Plus Math is really US focused today, just make sure everybody knows that. Um, so if you are a large advertiser, you're buying linear TV, but you're also buying you know, programmatic inventory, you're also working with DSPs. Uh, our, when there is inventory that's being purchased through a DSP, we'll provide the data plus math pixel so that we can capture those exposures and tie them back in to the holistic views that you saw. Um, in some of the screenshots you might have seen, there, there are some of the DSPs listed. So we're measuring them just like we're measuring the rest of the campaign. We get those exposures back primarily through pixels or there's other, you know, we have other tricks up our sleeve to get exposures from those platforms. But we're able to tie it in to give a holistic view for the, uh, for the marketer. And if you are a, a DSP and you're digging into to premium video, we are helping um, sell side partners create their own views so they actually can deliver reporting to brands um, or to agencies. So um, sell side partner could license the platform to actually like, measure their inventory. Does that make sense? Go ahead. Yeah, so 
couple things to unpack. So with ACR data, you, could, you understand what ads happen in what order. So you can identify addressable by looking for an ad that's out of order. It shouldn't be there, right? It's, it's happening in, a, in an odd spot. Um, it's not the typical flow. The break had Ford, then it had you know, P&G, then it had you know, whatever the next advertiser is. If there's been an addressable switch, there's been a new ad placed in, the order in the ACR events is, is off. And you can recognize that was a, an addressable spot or a, a non sequitur or perhaps bad data. Right? So you're able to identify it through that way. When we measure addressable, we, per, we partner with the MVPDs to get the addressable exposures. So we don't try to use ACR to measure addressable. If you can follow me, we'll, we'll get the addressable exposures from the MVPD and put that into, uh, into the exposure set. Um, and what was your, your second question? Oh, so we, uh, so data plus math, we're all about households. Uh, I know that is different than live ramp in general. So television is a shared viewing environment. So when we measure uh, TV, we look at household exposures. We don't try to figure out if it was you or your wife or your kids in front of the TV. Um, there are other companies that are trying to do that and you know, good luck to them um, developing those <laughs> sorts of algorithms. Uh, in TV, if we can tie the exposures that are associated with a household to outcomes that are associated with a household, it's a huge leap forward. Maybe and down the road when people are logging you, in, yeah. we'll, we'll solve for the, the And persons. if you see, so, well, we will actually quote an audience that looks like a person-based audience, like a female is 25 to 54. The way that we're doing that, we're basically just saying there is a, a woman 25 to 54 in that household. So it's all going up to the household, and we're using essentially the live ramp graph, um, which is <clears throat> starting at the person level, but aggregating up to a household ID. Is that making sense? Okay. Anybody else? Any other good ones out there? Okay, well, you guys are going to let us end on time. Thank you all very much for your time, and please reach out if you have more questions.